So we're getting right into the swing of things with spring. And so I thought I'd do a little video. I'm doing my first uh, relay of potato planting. Um, and these are TPS potatoes that I'm starting from True Potato Seed. These little guys um, are True Potato Seeds. You can see they look a lot like very small pepper or tomato seeds. Um, which makes a lot of sense since potatoes and tomatoes are in the same genus, Solanum. Um, so, yeah, I've start, been doing this for the past five years or so. I um, got excited about it from uh, some internet forums uh, a while back. And I've been starting a few potatoes from seed every year. And actually I brought, you can see this one is sort of a purple actually if I had it in the screen you can see this one is sort of a purple fleshed or actually purple skinned um, and this one I note on the bag that it produced its own berries last year here's a rather nice bright pink one which is from thundercloud it's called Right now, the, it's called Thundercloud Number 7. Um, yeah, I like the color on this one. It's, I mean, this is after months of storage, and it's still just a really intense bright pink. I'm pleased with that. Um, and then, some of them I didn't keep saved as, like, distinct individual uh plants um this was just the whole row of stuff i got um from seed from a seed train and last year was actually really terrible for um uh really terrible for growing tps potatoes we had a very bad drought and uh so most of the plants died and so even though these are kind of pathetic looking i'm these are like the winners, you know. They survived the drought with minimal irrigation. So um, even though they don't look like much, I have high hopes for them uh, genetically. And I'm going to plant them out. So yeah, the potatoes are really interesting because they're a polyploid. And so when you plant out the seed, you've got um multiple chromosomes for ev i mean instead of just having two chromosomes like a normal diploid they have uh well they're tetraploid actually so they have uh four sets of chrom four sets of each chromosome which means every seed of a potato plant is genetically distinct and there's a huge amount of segregation it can have for individual traits so let me just show you what I do to start TPS potatoes. This is Caureta Amarilla mix. Caureta Amarilla mix. And so what I do, actually I'm gonna, I'll just, so I don't get my seed. I just lightly sprinkle the seed on the soil there and then I'll give it just a light covering of peat. They don't need to get really buried very deep. So this one is Magic Molly. See, this seed is actually interesting. It's a lot darker than that Careta Amarilla. I got most of this seed um, via seed train and uh, seed trades from other potato enthusiasts. Um, and you'll see, it's kind of similar to like what Steven Edholm was talking about with 
uh, breeding apple varieties and how a lot of things you'll read say it's not worth doing. Breeding potatoes is something people will say it's not worth doing. And because it, you know, for every uh, seed that you germinate, you know, it's every seed that germinates, you know, only one in, you know, 10, 20,000 will survive to become a commercial variety or something like that. And that is actually true, but what you have to understand is the screening that they do for commercial varieties, you know, the things that a commercial breeder cares about in terms of potato, it has to be, it has to meet, you know, certain characteristics depending on what purpose the potato is going to. If it's going to be a chipping potato, there's a whole range of flesh characteristics it's got to have in order to make a good potato chip. If it's going to be a French frying potato, there's a whole range of very similar uh, flesh characteristics in terms of um, starch composition and dry weight. And then they really care about whether or not the, how the sugars behave over time and storage. And so, yeah, to meet those requirements. And then it's also got to like be a potato that can tolerate being piled up in huge piles and not get bruised or start to rot, you know? So there's all of these criteria that are only important in terms of the commercial industry. It is very easy to find a potato that tastes good and yields well just by growing out seed like this. That's not hard. What's hard is to find a potato that will stand up to treatment in, you know, the modern industrial uh potato processing you know and shipping and commercialization you know so if you want to create a commercial potato yes you need to like screen thousands and thousands and thousands of potatoes and that is the realm of commercial potato breeders but if you just want to breed a potato that um or grow out some potato seed and see if one of them will be good enough for you that's actually not a very high hurdle and if you're not trying to fit your potato into a commercial industrial pipeline you don't have to be so fussy and you don't have to like you know cull them so hard you know i think there's a lot of parallels with like apple breeding in that way yeah and i think last year here was a great year for screening potatoes because it was a brutal brutal drought and I got my TPS plant started late and so they didn't really have a chance to get really hooked in before we had terrible weather conditions really hot really dry not the particularly the kind of potato grown ideal potato growing weather and so the potatoes were really stressed and so most of them died because I wasn't really giving them a lot of attention because it, these you know TPS potatoes are like a side project on a side project for me. Um, potatoes, I don't grow them for market. I only grow them for our own homestead use. And so when we have like really drought, wet, droughty conditions like we had last year, a lot of my homesteading crops have to like sort of take care of themselves without a lot of babying. And so these potatoes that are in these bags are sort of the champion winners of total neglect in really harsh conditions so i'm very interested to see what they're going to be able to do this year now that i have a tuber that i can plant out because a tuber is going to give gives a you know a potato plant a huge jump start over what they have in the little tiny seed you know because potato seeds are small so but actually starting them from seed is not that hard if you if you've ever started tomato seeds or pepper seeds this is actually even a little bit easier because Potatoes are way more cold tolerant uh, as a seedling than tomatoes or peppers. So, but otherwise the process is the same. You know, you just, you know, put them on some uh, potting soil and you let them germinate. So this is purple pig knuckles. I'm just going to use up that whole bag. All of this seed that I'm planting this year I got from seed trades. Last year I had mostly used seed that I'd saved myself, and I'm probably gonna do a video on saving true potato seed from the berries um, when the time comes. And if you're interested in learning more about this topic, there actually is a book. This is called 
The Lost Art of Potato Breeding by Rebsy Fairholm. And this is a very excellent book. It's very readable. Rebsy is an excellent writer. Um, and she actually has a really excellent blog called Daughter of the Soil. And as far as I can, in, which has most of the information in this book is on her blog. And a lot of the color photos, actually photos in the blog are in this book um, in black and white for the most part. But they're in color on her web, on her blog. Um, and then she's also got some really good stuff about pea breeding. She was very active as an amateur breeder in, um, you know, 2000 to 2010 or so. Um, and she wrote this book about potato breeding. She's pretty much dropped off the uh, internet plant breeding world as of late. She's more active making uh, music. She's a Act, she's a sort of a professional musician and has I, as far as I can tell if she's still gardening She's not you know blogging or talking about it or interacting on the forums or anything, but um, this book is excellent. It's um, Got everything you need to know um, As far as I know it's still available on Amazon, but I mean this is a very small English publishing company I don't know how long this book will be in print, but um very worth getting if you're at all interested in potatoes. It's you know it's a great book. Michigan Land Race. And a little bit of peat. This is Amy Azul. This is seed from Wendy Montanez, who has a really nice um, YouTube channel. She's got some uh, good uh, videos about um, growing TPS seedlings um, and potting them up. TLSF 16. Obviously, I'm putting a lot of seeds down. I'm going to cull pretty ruthlessly and only keep the most vigorous plants. Um, this is Tolokan. So that's something like... Uh, a couple hundred potato seeds planted in these uh, seven little pots. And obviously, I can't grow out you know, 700 potato plants. So what I'll do is take like the 10 best from each of these pots or so, five to 10 most vigorous seedlings, and then I'll pot them up into like a plug sheet. And then once those have grown into a vigorous little um, seedling potato plant, they'll get planted out into the field to grow on. And so I'll pick the most vigorous seedlings out of here and then grow them on in the greenhouse and then the rest of them will just get chucked on the compost heap and then you know then we'll grow those out in the field for the year and then in the fall we'll dig those up and we'll look and see which of those seedlings actually produced a decent yield in their seedling year and that's sort of a good indication of which ones to keep and then the rest of them will just eat if there's enough potatoes even to to mention because some of them will produce essentially nothing um that is you know every every single potato seed is a big roll of the dice but the big difference between growing out potato seed and growing out something like apples is apples you gotta wait however many years before you even get to see the fruit like five years if you put it on a dwarfing rootstock whereas these potatoes the first year you've got your finished variety if it's worth a darn and if it's not you just throw it out okay